working hard versus working smart. So when you see a lot of um, discussion around starting businesses, when you see a lot of discussion about entrepreneurship, um, and even not just in entrepreneurship, just in sort of like the world of work in general, sort of like careers and getting a job and doing things like that, there is this um, dichotomy between like hard work, hustle, success, like what, what is it, what is the key sort of ingredients to the recipe of success in these different areas? And different people have different opinions. Like there is a very big um, kind of what's been described as like the hustle porn um, kind of industry, which, effect, which effectively is, you know, the harder you work, the more successful you get, which is, you know, to a certain degree is obviously true as a tautology, but like how much of someone's success can be attributed to the, how hard they work versus like how smart that it is that they're working and like what is the best balance between those two things? Uh, what's your opinion then? Yeah, so I think uh, work, to work hard uh, is easier than to work smart uh, because of, and also it could be uh, risky uh, on the sense that, um, I mean, don't take me wrong. You, you, I think by definition you will, uh, on a, it's so competitive nowadays. Uh, we have all these millions of people without jobs that you will need to work your ass off, like 100%. Um, but uh, it's tempting, you know, it's a classic, like being busy doesn't mean you are productive or you are making, adding value, you know? So, uh, or, or making, uh, adding, uh, no, making competitive advantage or whatever. So, so then, um, and it's very uh, sometimes easy to get trapped into that, you know, like replying in emails all day or which maybe it's fine. That's what you need to do. Uh, but, uh, or, or doing, doing stuff that you will earn nothing or very little and it takes you a lot of time. So then you are filling your day doing lots of stuff, but you are not making anything out of it. So, and uh, being, uh, you know, working smart is, um, of course, uh, it sounds good, but it's hard. So I think it's harder, it's counterintuitive, and you need to think um, and think and test and iterate. And, uh, and you will have also less feedback because when you're doing stuff, you know you're doing, you know, you feel at the end of the day, you go to sleep and you can feel that you did stuff. Uh, whereas if you have been thinking, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe you don't need to be thinking the whole day, maybe, but even at like a two, three hour thinking exercise is a lot. Uh, it's, it's very, you know, um, uh, like resource, uh, intense, uh, from, uh, um, and it could be stressful as well. Uh, but also you don't know if you are, if what you are thinking again is adding value uh, or if, it, if you are onto something interesting or not. So then you need to get feedback for that. Um, so the way to get feedback is to talk to people. Uh, we talked before about that, like go share your ideas with entrepreneurs, investors, or anyone else. Uh, ideally entrepreneurs or investors or people in your industry, mentors could be as well. Um, could be friends, that's fine, but as long as they are qualified to give an opinion on, on what, where you are putting forward um, or just test the market, do the MVP, go test it. Uh, and that's when you need to work hard into executing your ideas, your planning. So it will need to be a mix of both. Uh, and over time, uh, probably, um, you know, the, also the way to scale and make more money, usually is, it will be very, very rare that you will make a lot of money on, on your own. So companies are a group of people that, you know, um, so I'm not saying the more people you have in the company, the more money you will make because that used to be the case, uh, but it's not anymore because of software, for example, software business can scale uh, and have like millions of customers with not uh, that big. I think WhatsApp has like uh, 50 engineers or a hundred, something like that. And they has like 4 billion users or something like that. So, um, uh, of course, software is a peculiar industry, but um, 
um, you will need, uh, so, so your time is limited. So even if you work hard and smart, uh, so, or let's say if you work hard, you can work hard for like X hours per day, 16 hours, whatever, uh, maximum. Uh, you need to sleep, you need to do other stuff. Um, and then the way to get to the next level is by thinking on how you're gonna get there, planning, uh, building strategies, and building processes. So you will need to incorporate people, delegate. Uh, and of many, oftentimes, actually in many cases, when you delegate, you will earn less. But that's fine because you need to have a plan on how you're gonna, uh, over time, make more money. So out of that, so you are leveraging on other, someone else's skills, uh, network, resources, and um, I mean, on, on their time, especially. So um, that way you can scale and how to figure that out uh, with all the economics in place or in your favor, uh, that's when you need to work smart and think a lot and get to the habit of, yeah, um, thinking like every day, I would say, um, what's next? Uh, what are we, how are we doing this? Um, uh, are we on to something? Or, and then uh, some hard rules that probably, you know, if give, uh, put some deadlines, you know? So if you start something uh, and it's not working for three years, uh, maybe just shoot it uh, and start something else. Um, so, and I, I'm just saying three years could be, you know, for you maybe three years is, 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 is not that much or maybe it's, it's, it's a lot of time and you will you you will you are open to, or you cannot afford to give three years to something and you and it, also, it also depends on what what are your goals maybe it's doing all right but not as good as you thought or maybe it's not scalable uh, so if it's not then a good suggestion would be probably to try to convert that mini project or whatever mini business you built into a passive income so try to automate it or just put one guy to manage it. So you will earn less, but it will be a passive income and then you can go into something else. Uh, so what was what your take on working hard versus smart deadlines and shooting projects? <laughs> <laughs> kill, kill them, kill them with fire. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, yeah, I, I 100% agree with all of that. I, um, I think the reason that there's even like a debate or a reason why people hold... Um, different opinions on this topic i think is because fundamentally people are different people's mentalities are different they're built differently and for different people um they will struggle with different things and i think the um the work hard the hustle the um that kind of message um is an important message for those people who tend towards um procrastination who tend towards uh, laziness who, who, you know, who people who are not naturally, not naturally sort of go getting motivated type people, then having a consistent reminder of to, to, to keep your mind on the track of saying like, okay, like in order to do anything, you, you know, in order to achieve anything, you need to work at it. And so that reminder to work at it is an important thing. And, and so it's a helpful, useful crutch for someone who has that kind of sort of mental set up to do that. Um, I think, that, and on the opposite side of that coin, work smart. There are a whole bunch of people who, um, you know, who have a mentality of like, of singular focus, which is like, right, I'm heading in that direction, head down, brrr, away I go. I'm just going to ignore everything else, just like pile through like they're tremendously hard workers, but they never come up to look around and see where they've gotten to. And maybe they've, you know, if they were digging a trench, maybe they're sort of halfway out into the English channel by that point or, you know, and so, and so the opposite idea of like work smart, which is like, okay, hard work is important, but it's also important to make sure you're working in the right direction. Again, is a useful tool to remind yourself to, to hit the happy medium. And I think that, um, a good way to think of it in a way that I like to try and think of it is that um, starting businesses and running small businesses, particularly, there is a very large element of luck to all of this, right? Um, even with the best idea and even with the hardest work, there is going to be an element of 
have you happened to have chosen something which the market is going to really respond to and they're going to want to buy and that you know there's there's a huge amount of luck associated with with anything any new endeavor it doesn't have to be business anything like anything you're trying to do there's a huge amount of luck associated with it and there are two ways for you to improve your luck right whether you consider yourself a lucky person or not it's completely random like, but there's two ways that you can actively increase your luck. And there's this idea of like luck surface area, which is you want to try and expose yourself to the chance of being lucky as much as possible. And the way you increase your luck surface area is by two ways. One is like generally the harder that you work or the more work that you do, the more chance you have of being lucky because the more, you know, the more goes you get at doing something, the more that one of those things will turn out to be lucky and that's the way you go. And the other way to be lucky is to be smart about it is to say like, don't put all of your efforts into one sort of tiny little channel where, you know, it only gives you one chance of being lucky, no matter how hard you work. It's like put your work into think about it and say, okay, well, which of the, what channels are available to me and which of those are more likely to be lucky than others. And for what reason? And to, so then by, picking multiple sort of routes and also by working hard on those routes and by sensibly and intelligently divvying up the amount of effort that you're putting in between those routes, then you increase the chances of one or two or three of those things becoming lucky and eventually being successful in whatever sort of endeavor that you're heading towards. Um, you, I think there's also something to be said for, um, working being smart about working hard as well like working hard does not mean um it's a, it's a you know there's this the, the classic aphorism is it's is, is a marathon not a sprint right and that is like if you were to set out to run a marathon the worst thing you can possibly do at the start of the marathon is to take off at top speed off of the start line as fast as your little legs can carry you because after 200 meters 400 meters you're going to be completely spent and you've got another 26 and, a, and not quite half a miles to complete as part of your marathon. Right. And so part of working hard, but working smart is by saying, right, okay, I need to be, I need to be able to sustain this for a long, relatively long period of time. So what is the amount of effort that I can sustain over a longer period of time? And that is not, you know, working all nighters every night. That's not, you know, going crazy about stuff that's not, you know, working so hard, you forget to eat or you forget to socialize or you forget to sleep or all those other things that are important for sustaining longer term effort. Like your best effort over the course of a year is not working 16, 18 hour days every single day. Your best effort over the course of a year is working eight, 10 hour days plus good sleep, plus good food, plus a bit of downtime to let yourself reset and things like that. And as with all things, you know, moderation is key the danger lies in taking one thing too simplistically and taking it too far and just going too crazy with it. Um, so yeah, so, so my, my advice there is, is to like, if you, if you tend towards sort of laziness or procrastination, um, you know, keep in mind that you do need to put the effort in and you do need to actively consciously work at putting the effort in to, to get the best results. But also, if you're the, of the tendency to sort of put your head down and bulldoze through things, take the opportunity to come up and think, like, am I heading in the right direction? Is there other things I can be doing? Is this, what's my end goal here? Am I heading towards my end goal or am I just heading off in a random direction as fast as I can possibly go? Yeah. I mean, um, so I, I think from a, a practical advice, because to work hard is kind of, you, you know what you need to do, um, then it's just to put the effort. But... To work smart, sometimes you don't know how to. Uh, mm -hmm. Oftentimes, uh, most of the times. So um, I, I think uh, 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 like a very basic advice would be just the more information you have, the better. So if you don't know what to do or whatever, just uh, read, read stuff, read books, read the news, what's going on. We talked before about like taking uh, business models that work in one country and take it to another country. Um, so that that's like being smart in some sense, but it's, it's, it's not, you don't need to be smart. You just have information or when investors have information and they make money it's because they just have, they're not smarter than others. They just have more information. So nowadays you can, if you know what's going on, you will be more likely to know the trends, uh, and what investors would like to invest on 
or where the market can go. Uh, and you can complement that with your thoughts or what you think or your circle or your ecosystem. Um, and uh, yeah, so, and even if you know nothing about trends or this or that, just start reading some uh, books or blogs on people that are qualified and that have done it before and learn what they say. Just go read them, uh, understand where they're coming from, what they have built, what they say, and then you can follow them maybe on social media. And uh, yeah, so um, turn your entertainment time into like um, information research, uh, information gathering or research time. And just by doing that, uh, like within one, two months, I would say, you will be like, well, way better informed or way more informed and, and you will start uh, seeing things differently. You will start having ideas, fresh ideas on do this, do that. And then you can test them. Yeah. Absolutely. Agree hundred percent. Right. That's it for today. Thanks very much for listening. We'll be back next week with some more nuggets of knowledge. In the meantime, please do check out our YouTube channel, which is where we post this and our other podcasts. You can search for net workers, two words, uh, or you can find the link in the show notes for this podcast. If you're interested into a, in a deeper dive into all things entrepreneurial, including more detailed information, help, mentorship, and courses, please check out our website, which is at networkers.co. See you all next time. Thanks. Bye.